Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1093 of our trek and time for our Philosophy Friday series. Each Friday, we will ponder some of the basic truths and mysteries of life and how they can impact us in creating our living legacy. As we continue on this trek that we call life, sometimes we have questions about life. So our Friday's trek is a time where we can ask Gramps. Gramps will answer questions that you would like to ask your dad or granddad, but for whatever reason, this is not possible. No matter how old we are, I know that all of us would like the opportunity to ask Dad or Gramps questions about many areas of life. We may mix it up a bit on our Friday episodes, but we will strive to keep them down to earth and enjoyable. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Gramps, please email them to guthrie at wisdom-trek.com. We often wonder how best to help others but we are often hesitant when other people look like they have caused their own problems by the choices that they have made. The fact is that we don't know what others are struggling with and need to be very careful about judging others and more willing to help them. For the question for this week is, Hey Gramps, I know the Bible tells us to love your neighbor as yourself, but what does that really mean? So today's story will be Love Your Neighbor. The first character in our story today is a young man named Jim. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is a commandment of scripture, but sometimes difficult to interpret. How far does our obligation really go? After all, who is our neighbor? Most of us don't even know our literal neighbors. How can we love them? What do the words really mean to love our neighbor? Well, listen to this tale that I came across recently and decipher it for yourself. Early one evening, Jim, a very successful young businessman, took his Mercedes XLR and headed to the mall to buy his girlfriend a Christmas present. Jim saw on his GPS that his usual route was closed off, so he decided to chance it and go through a crazy dangerous area of town to get there. Jim figured it was a better choice than having to go all the way around the city, which would add two hours to his journey. Well, the area that he had to cut through was the north end of the city, which was known for his gang warfare and biker bars. What Jim did not realize, that he had chosen a completely wrong time to go through that part of the city as the young gang members started to gather for their nightly escapades and certain young ladies went outside to claim their piece of the sidewalk for their nightly business of selling themselves. At a red light, Jim stopped and he found himself in the middle of a gang war. The gang member from one group took a shot at the enemy across the street and Jim and his Mercedes was the unfortunate barrier between them. The bullet barely glazed his shoulder, but it did start to bleed quite a bit, and he cried out loudly in sharp pain. Carefully, he managed to pull over and stop his car. Jim got out of his car, intending to get help, but in his weakened state, he attracted the wrong kind of attention. A couple thugs looking for some quick drug money noticed his stupor, and decided that it would be easier to rough him up than try to break into a store. They also noticed that his car keys were left in the car, and his car was running close by, and they put two and two together. Soon he was laying there, without his car, without his cell phone, and without his wallet. They left him battered and bruised, and he was still bleeding. By the time the thugs drove off, Jim was in really rough shape and lay smashed dirty on the sidewalk. Jim managed to pull him over to the edge of a building and laid there for what seemed like hours, but it was really only a few minutes. Jim looked up and was thrilled when he saw what appeared to be a pastor from the local church walk by. Help me, pastor, he cried out feebly, but the pastor crossed over to the other side of the sidewalk and did not even look his way. But what was the pastor's perspective on this? The pastor did not usually walk this way, but he was on his way to a board meeting for all the churches in his district. Unfortunately, it was one of the rougher areas of town, and the pastor really wasn't comfortable in this environment. The pastor wished he had been able to find parking closer, but he had been forced to walk several blocks to his destination. 
The pastor saw the young man lying there against the building a few feet away and felt very nervous. Who knows what that man had been drinking in order to be so intoxicated. Often these people are dangerous and unpredictable. Just for security's sake, he crossed over on the other side of the street. The pastor was already late for his meeting and didn't want any additional complications. I'm sure the police will deal with it, he thought. I need to get going. A faint wave of guilt washed over him, hoping that the man would be okay, but the pastor quickly told himself that he was not responsible for saving the entire world. They have people for that, he thought. It's not my calling. The next person that walked by was a church lady. About a half hour later, a very frequent church-going lady walked by in a rush. She was carrying a big Bible, and Jim thought that she would surely help him. He tried to call out to her, but she did not help. Instead, she put her nose in the air and quickly walked away in horror and disgust. The woman had lived on this street for many years and had seen this part of town decline in the last decade. What had once been a hard-working, respectable part of town was now overrun by hookers, pimps, and drug addicts. Every day she heard more horrors on the nightly news, and it made her sick about it. She had once been proud to live here, but now she lived in fear. When she heard the young man call out to her, she was sure that he would be begging for money to buy some more booze. She was tired of being lambasted by the welfare-dependent bums. She looked at him in disgust and anger at the way the country was going. She hurried home to her little apartment, safe with bars on the windows and a good security system. She knew that she shouldn't have gone out so late in the day. And after this, just as Jim was almost passing into unconsciousness, he caught a glimpse of a rough-looking man with a long beard and tattoos. He was in a jean vest covered with decals and very tight pants. Jim would have been normally afraid of a biker-looking man under the different circumstances, but he had no fear left, only empty curiosity. In his stupor, Jim thought, I wonder what kind of bike he rides. The man who was dressed like a biker parked his Harley Davidson and decided to hoof it off to the bar where he was going to relax for a few hours. He had had a very hard week at the mill and was looking forward to forgetting his troubles with some good friends. Later, the biker thought he would grab a cab and pick up his bike in the morning. No one on the street would dare touch it because they knew him. As the biker neared his destination, he noticed Jim who looked like he had been beaten up really badly. Feeling sorry for him, he went over and gently felt his wrist. Yes, he was still breathing. Are you okay? He whispered, not wanting to startle him. Not really, Jim replied. Let me call you an ambulance. You look like you're in pretty bad shape. The biker used his cell phone to call 911 and waited with Jim until they arrived, and then he paid the ambulance driver the $500 fee to take Jim. Take my cell phone, he told Jim, and use it to call your mom or dad or girlfriend about where you are. And here's a couple hundred dollars to tide you over until you get all your ID straightened out. Sorry for what happened to you, man. Those guys were really thugs. Jim left in the ambulance and went to the hospital. He used a cell phone to call his family and friends, the police, and afterwards he called the biker to give him back his cell phone. How can I repay you, he asked. Oh, don't worry about it, the biker told him. There are still a few good guys left in the world. So the question really is, who is your neighbor? Three people passed our young man and saw three different things. One saw a dangerous drunk, another saw a lazy bum, and one saw a person who needed help. Who was the one who helped his neighbor? The Bible tells us to love your neighbor as yourself. Who is your neighbor? Think about this tale and discover it for yourself. And most of you probably realize that this tale was an adaptation of the parable told by Jesus, which is recounted in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. So here's a story told by Jesus in the scriptures. One day, an expert of the religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's right, Jesus told him. 
Do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his action, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with his story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed over to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along. When he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins telling him, Take care of this man, and if his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I'm here. Now which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. And that will conclude our Ask Gramps session for today. Join us again next Friday for another question on our Ask Gramps episode. Our next trek will be Meditation Monday, where we will help you to reflect on the most important areas of life. So encourage your friends and family to join us, and then come along with us on Monday for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,092 daily treks or read the associated journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward. Enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you on Monday.